making known to this nation the gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, the evangelist, Dr. Oliver B. Green. with our message, Oliver B. Green. Father, we thank thee for this Christmas season of the year when Christians, believers, born-again people, remember that Jesus was born. At this season, Father, it makes no difference. We know that. We're not worshiping a day, a birthday, or a birth. We are worshiping a living Lord. But he was born. He was born in Bethlehem of Judea. He took upon himself the form of sinful flesh that we might be sons of God by faith in his finished work. So we thank thee, our Heavenly Father, for the birth of Jesus, for the fact that he left the Father's bosom. He was born of the Virgin Mary. He came to lay his life down that we might have life and have it abundantly. So our Father, accept our sincere thanks to thee today. For the Lord Jesus. We know that it was God the Father who so loved us that he sent his only begotten Son. And the virgin conceived in her womb and brought forth her firstborn. Her firstborn son wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. We know that it was all for us, Father. Accept our thanks. Accept our worship. Accept our praise. Accept our adoration now. Because we do love thee, and we worship thee, and we thank thee, Heavenly Father, for sending Jesus to die for us. Father, bless the saints who are praying with us now. Reclaim the backsliders who are praying with us now. And save the lost who are praying with us now, Father. Save every soul that's calling upon you for salvation right now. And we'll give you the praise in Jesus precious name. Amen. Now, beloved, if you have your Bibles, get them and turn today to Luke chapter 2, and I want to read some very familiar scripture, and I want to talk to you about some things that we need to see and hear from the Word of God today. Now, in Isaiah 9, 6, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now in Luke 2 and verse 1, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Now that meant all the inhabited earth. When the Bible refers to the world, it's talking about not primarily, not primarily the uh, dirt and the mountains and the sea and the trees and the land, but it's talking about the peoples of earth, and so all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when 
Cyrus was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed, every one, into his own city. Now the Holy Spirit, that is God, had a purpose in this taxing, and it was decreed that every man must go back to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, under the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary as espoused wife, being great with child. Now notice, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. For there was no room for them in the inn. Now I'm coming back to that verse a little bit later. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Now notice, great tidings, good joy to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And then came with haste and found Mary. They came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now notice that. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now watch that verse. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told concerning the child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things which they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Now then, beloved, what I want to point out to you today, and of course my time is slipping. I've read quite a bit of scripture, but I want to point out some things, and then I want to show you something. And I want every consecrated, born-again, spirit-filled, uh, devil-hating uh, Christian, if you hate the devil and hate modernism and liberalism and all the other isms and schisms and spasms of the devil, I want you to keep listening to me today. I have a very interesting note to tell you and show you in the Bible and I'm going to tell you some things you need to know. Now, uh, these, uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, this account that Luke gives us tells us about the taxing, and that was ordained of God to bring Joseph back into Bethlehem where it was prophesied that Jesus would be born. So he went in, and uh, when, they, uh, when they arrived in Bethlehem, there was no room for Jesus in the inn or in the hotel or the motel or the boarding house, we'd say. So Joseph, according to verse 7, took his precious wife, great with child, ready to be delivered, and he carried her uh, to the countryside in the edge of the city. I've been to the place. I've seen the, sh the field. I have movies, uh, color movies of the field where the shepherds were watching their flocks the night Jesus was born. And I, I've been to the spot where they say the approximate spot where the little sheep barn was where Jesus was born under the shelter of a barn and in the place where the animals ate the straw. And so Jesus, the little newborn babe, the Son of God, very God, yes, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, was wrapped up not in a beautiful little blue blanket, but in swaddling clothes, the claws the pieces of garments, that is the claws that the shepherds used to rub down the animals, swaddling clothes, 
and they laid him in a manger. Now, a manger is the place that they put the straw for the animals to eat. So there was born Son of God. Now, you know, I praise God. Now, listen. I praise God that he had a humble, lowly birth. I thank God that he wasn't born in Herod's palace. I thank God that he wasn't born in Pilate's palace. I thank God that he wasn't born in Caesar's palace. I thank God that my Jesus was born in a barn. I do. Amen. Now you say, preacher, why do you say that? All right. If he had been born in a multi-million dollar mansion, then the rich would have said he's our savior. But, you know, I'm glad he came to save the rich and the poor, the wise, the unwise, the bond, and the free. And he was born as humbly as anyone could be born, and yet he was God in flesh. Yes, he was conceived of the Holy Ghost. God was his father. The Virgin Mary was his mother. Now, then I must rush because I want to show you something. Now, in verse 8, the shepherds were there keeping the flock, and the angel of the Lord, the angel of Jehovah, appeared and announced, and he says, I bring you good tidings, hallelujah, good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Now, the birth of Jesus is good tidings, and if you know him as your Savior in the new birth, he brings great joy, and thank God it is to all people. Now, that kind of hurts the predestinarians, I mean the hyper-Calvinist. I believe in Bible predestination, Bible predestination. But that kind of, you know, uh, this select, elect handful of pets and this little bunch that uh, claim that there's nobody saved but a certain little group. Now, this book says to all people, A-double-L people, all, the poor and the millionaire, the white, the colored, the rich, the poor, the wise, the unwise, the bald, the Listen, it doesn't make difference your nationality. It doesn't make any difference your monetary standing or your social standing or it doesn't make any difference, God bless you, which part of town you live in. You may be a millionaire, and I, I don't know. I suppose maybe, maybe I have a millionaire listening to me today. I don't know. And then I may have some precious old grandmother, granddaddy, or some dear person that doesn't have five cents on this earth. Not a nickel could you produce if your life depended upon it. But you can have Jesus. He came to all people. Good tidings, great joy to all people. For unto us, unto you, is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now then, they said you'll find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And they found him exactly like it was said and announced by the angel of the Lord. Now, this message, this Christmas message, this message of the birth of Jesus, whether he was born January the 25th, or February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. doesn't make any difference. The fact is the, uh, in other words, the thing that counts is the fact of his birth, not the date. Whether it was December the 1st or the 31st, the 15th or the 25th, that doesn't make any difference. Listen, beloved, it's good tidings, it's great joy, and praise God, it's to all people. Now, let me tell you something. If you're listening to my voice today and you die in your sins and go to hell, it won't be God's fault because God gave Jesus for all people. Now then, here's what I want you to notice. I have here, I have uh, on my desk right here before me, a copy of the Revised Standard Version of the Bible, the book that you're seeing, you're seeing, many of you are seeing advertised on the backs of your Sunday school quarterlies and in magazines that you never thought that you'd see it advertised in. Now, some of you never dreamed that it would be quoted and used and referred to and advertised in your literature, but it is. Now then, I have here before me verse 33 in the King James Version. Here's what it says. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Now then, in the Revised Standard Version, in the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke and verse 33, and his father, I'm reading verbatim, it's there, my friend. If you have one, read it. If you have one, read it. And his father, F-A-T-H-E-R, and his mother, M-O-T-H-E-R, marvel at what was said about him. Now then, you notice in the King James Version, it says in Luke 2, 33, Luke 2, 33, and Joseph 
and his mother. Joseph and his mother. Now you see, that makes a distinction. You see, if I, and I haven't, I have only one wife, I've only been married one time, and my wife is the mother of my two boys. But for the sake of illustration, suppose I had married and my first wife died. But suppose that I married then another woman whose husband had died. And suppose this second woman that I married had a boy, a son, by the man that died. Now somebody would say, there goes, my name is Oliver. There goes Oliver, Mrs. Green, and her son. Or there goes Oliver, Mrs. Green, and her boy. Now anybody would know that the boy was Mrs. Green's boy, not mine, see? I would be her husband, but not the father of the child that was born by a previous marriage and the man died. Now listen, don't get mistaken. I've been married one time, and the wife I now have is the only wife I've ever had, and she's the mother of my two babies, my two boys. They're not babies. But now you see, the King James Version says, and Joseph, and Joseph, get it now, get this, verse 33, and Joseph and his mother, Joseph and his mother. Joseph was not the father, but Mary was the mother. Now, wait a minute. And the Revised Standard Version says, and his father and his mother. Marvel at what was said about him. And his father and his mother. Now, let me tell you something. If Joseph was the father, and that's who was present at that time, if Joseph was the father of Jesus. Now, this that I'm reading about is when Simeon, when Simeon came to see the child, when Simeon, verse 25, came to see the child, he marveled, he marveled, and he said, let me die in peace now because I've seen the hope of Israel. And the King James Version says, and Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. That is, the things that the prophet of God said about Jesus. But the Revised Standard Version says, the father and the mother of him. The father and the mother. Now, if Joseph was the father, Jesus was conceived out of wedlock. He was an illegitimate child, and he was born out of wedlock. But let me tell you, beloved, let me tell you, he was not illegitimate. He was not born out of wedlock, and Joseph was not his father. Now, I know that some of you are just a little bit sad and let down at such a reading concerning Jesus, and it breaks my heart, and I'm honest with you. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I told you, I've been telling you in this series. I've been preaching all this month on the wonderful Christ. Now, the liberals and the modernists and the haters of God are putting Jesus down on the level with other men. Now, Jesus is not on the level with other men. Jesus is or was the God-man. Now, he's the man seated at the right hand of God. 1 Timothy 2.5, 1 Timothy 2.5, Jesus is seated now at the right hand of God. And Joseph was not his father. God Almighty was the father of Jesus. God overshadowed Mary. She conceived of the Holy Ghost. She gave birth to her firstborn child in Bethlehem in a sheep barn. They wrapped him in swaddling clothes. They laid him in a manger. And the Lord God, that is the angel of Jehovah, announced it to the shepherds. And they went into Bethlehem and they saw the child lying in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes. Then Simeon came, and when he saw, now then, in verse, I told you it begins in verse 25 of Luke 2. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the, the same was a just and a devout man waiting for the consolation of Israel. The Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law. Now it says parents. 
Joseph was his foster father. Not his father, but his foster father. Now then, they brought him to the, the temple. Then it was that they said, and Joseph and his mother marveled. And the RSV says, the father, his father and his mother, and his father and his mother. Now let me tell you this, beloved. Let me tell you this. If Joseph was the father of Jesus, we don't have a savior. But praise God, Joseph was not his father. God Almighty was the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But let me say this to you. Thank God Jesus has been born. He lived, he suffered, he died. They buried him. He came back from the dead, praise God. And he lives today to save your soul if you're not saved. He lives to make intercession for you. And if you'll bow your head and shut your eyes and call on him right now, he'll save you, he'll wash you your sins away. Father, oh, Father, speak to the unsaved. Save the soul that's nearest the pits of the damned right now. Save many souls that are calling upon you right now. And we'll give you the praise, Jesus, because we ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who left the Father's bosom and came into this world to pay the sin debt. We ask it in his precious name. Amen.